the Air Force uh, bombed many targets in Gaza, and this will continue. Hamas have decided to continue and will pay for the price on that decision. Tonight's top story, a failed ceasefire and more rockets over Israel and Gaza. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says Israel has resumed its aerial campaign against Hamas after its terrorist group rejected a deal put forward earlier this week by Egypt. Hamas continues to bombard Israel with rockets, killing an Israeli man yesterday, the country's first fatality in the eight days of fighting. Oral Braun is a professor at the University of Toronto and Harvard University. He joins us now from studios in Toronto. Uh, Mr. Braun, this is uh, yet again another in, uh, instance of the international community watching a fight started by Hamas and then lecturing Israel on what they have to do with it. Is Benjamin Netanyahu on the right path in, in saying, we're willing to talk for peace, but we'll bombard you until you stop? Well, I think uh, it's very important to get to the basic principles of what is happening. And what we are witnessing is a fight between a genocidal terrorist group, Hamas, and it is uh, declared as a terrorist group by United States, by Canada, by the European Union, in the case of European Union, in terms of the military wing of, of Hamas, in a democracy. A democracy may make mistakes, but it cannot be equated with a terrorist group. So, for example, if we look at the United States and we look at Al-Qaeda, there is no uh, way that we can equate the two. And this is the basic thing that we have to start with. The second element is that we also need to look at what is happening on the ground. And in the case of Israel, they have used missiles such as the uh, um, Iron Dome to try to protect its civilian population and largely have been effective. In the case of Hamas, they're using the population to protect their missiles that they launch at Israel. If those missiles were not intercepted, tens of thousands of Israelis would be dead right now. Mm -hmm. If Israel was using the same tactics as Hamas, you would have hundreds of thousands of dead in Gaza and the war would have been over in a matter of hours maybe days. So a democracy fights with one hand behind uh, uh, its back. What Hamas and their supporters would like to do is to have Israel's both hands tied. And this is what the international community has to understand, that a democracy does need to restrain itself. A democracy does need to look at the international law. And Israel has been doing that the best way it can. But it cannot be prevented from defending itself. That is I a fundamental right and duty. Well, I was making the point the other day that if Israel wanted this over, it would be over. They could crush Hamas. They have that capability, and they have. And I think they've been showing restraint, and, and yet you get the talking heads tut-tutting them and saying, you must show restraint. I think John Baird made a good point that, uh, similar to what you were just saying, when he held his news conference yesterday on, if this was happening in Canada, people would just want it over. Here's Baird. Uh, one of the fundamental obligations of governments in civilized society is the security and the protection of its population. When you have between 120 and 150 rockets being fired at civilian populations, um, I think uh, Israel has been left with no choice. I think if this were to happen in Canada, Canadians would expect their government to first and foremost do one thing, to make it stop. All right, so uh, do you think that uh, people would be calling for Canada to show restraint if we were being bombed by a neighbor? It would be very difficult to see how Canada or any other state would not react to this kind of deliberate attack at trying to kill as many of its civilian population as possible. And again, let's not forget that Hamas is aiming its rocket at civilians and they want to draw civilian blood. When those rockets are aimed at Jerusalem, at Tel Aviv, at Ashdod, Ashkelon, they are meant to kill civilians in as large number as possible. And consequently, when we have this kind of false argument of proportionality, which is a very specific concept in international law and has been misused and misinterpreted, then fundamentally what we're saying to a fellow democracy is, we want you to have both of your hands tied behind your back. Canada would not accept it. Certainly, the United States has shown in the past they would not accept it. I cannot think of any country that would accept that. And consequently, what we are seeing at the moment is that Hamas is getting encouragement from certain quarters, from demonstrators in Europe, from uh, certain uh, mm -hmm. uh, talking heads on television who are saying, well, 
you know, this is well, a complex issue and we must look at this part and uh, that part instead of looking at the basics. We've got less than a minute left. I want to ask you this. Hamas was democratically elected 2006. Do they still enjoy popular support or will the people of Gaza, because the West Bank isn't dealing with this in the same way, will the people of Gaza decide they finally had enough and get rid of the leadership of Hamas, which is bringing all of this misery upon them? Well, you raise an important point because, again, we uh, uh, keep saying Hamas was democratically elected. Uh, first of all, we don't know just uh, how fair that election was, but let's assume that they were democratically elected. Uh, it doesn't mean that they are democratic. And then a year later, they basically engaged in a coup d'etat and they killed off their opponents. They were throwing off uh, Fatah members from 10-story uh, buildings. And even if an entity or an organization is democratically elected, it can behave in a totalitarian terroristic fashion. I mean, Hitler was democratically elected. What does that exactly mean? What is the level of support for Hamas? We don't know because they act not only as a terrorist organization vis-a-vis -vis Israel, but against their own people. So it's hard to say what the level of support would be any time they create an external enemy and they launch rockets. Of course, there will be a boost in their popularity, and this is one of the reasons they're doing it. Mm. The real level of support is something that could only be gauged if you had truly fair elections, and that's not about to happen in Gaza. Professor Braun, great talking as always. Thanks so much. My pleasure.